before we start taking pub uh, taking up um, public hearings, we said earlier that we would take public comment because there was some confusion about um, what time this meeting started. So we will take public comment for a little bit. Um, Brian, do we have anybody on the line that wants to speak? So at this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to be heard, uh, please hit star nine if you're coming in on the telephone line or raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And actually we have somebody in the room here, so. You wanna start there? I'll give them a minute, yeah. Okay. Uh, David Ballard Geddes, Jr. Hi, Hi, commissioners, it's good to see everyone again. I'm David Ballard Geddes, Jr. I live on Georgia Avenue in Palm Harbor. The county trim notice, uh, the, the truth and millage property tax uh, notice is, is soon to be mailed out to the residents. And again, I find this billing practice to be non-uniform as actuated. The water district, the water district charge is that super under positioned on the county ad valorem is labeled as a non-ad valorem charge. The charge is not a county property tax lien but a levy, a water district levy as under positioned. Now based on both ordinance and resolution coupled with a few statutes that we've gone over in the past, um, to my understanding the county has already been sold to the water district in a fee simple title. Over the next 20 some odd years the county functions such as school systems, fire department, police, et cetera, shall all be placed under district control. Now the district as a, not as a duly elected body of government um, is intent on rising into power and they are intent on levying upon the civilian population, thus driving the county lean into a water district levy. And this act is an overt an overt violation of Article 3, Section 3 of the U.S. Constitution. And as I've stated before, the district levy, I feel, um, must be repealed um, and replaced, uh, maintain it as a, a lien as the civilian population is accustomed to with the county property tax lien um, and must be remain as an ad valorem um, billing practice. Thank you. Thank you. So Brian, what do we have on the line? Uh, Madam Chair, we have one speaker that wishes to be heard on the line, Mr. Dave Waddell. Uh, Mr. Waddell, welcome back to the commission. If you'll go ahead and unmute, uh, you'll have three, two, are we doing two minutes, Madam Chair? Um, I think we can do three. Okay. Mr. Waddell, you'll have three minutes to address Don't the board. Please unmute and, and go thank ahead. You, thank you for the three minutes. I've been giving it some thought. Hope you all had a good break and got some food in your belly. We got two issues. We got health and business, both that dramatically affect our tax base. In order to keep it alive, I want you to consider something because everybody could probably use one right now is let's legalize weed in Florida because the tax base could be greatly improved. Believe me, everybody could use a joint. But in any case, Regarding business, you do have oversight and you do have leverage, okay? And we're on our own. So, we can't do contact tracing. That's out of the question. Uh, the tests aren't there, okay? So the few tests that we do have, like we do direct to healthcare folks and uh, law enforcement and whatnot, let's direct it towards business so we can set up mandatory anonymous reporting it doesn't have to be a big deal you know two weeks down i'm putting in a new floor the kid got sick whatever but we got to start being proactive everything we're doing is reactive and once again we used to open meetings with some sort of a spiritual opening okay and if there was ever a time we needed advice from a spiritual advisor it's now all right, and I'd also like to request that anything I have said that I haven't submitted but have said on Zoom be made a matter of public record. But you guys, you got the impossible situation. I'm trying to give you the easy fix. Let's direct testing at businesses, try and keep them open, okay? 
Everybody do their good citizenship. Let's do that. And let's try and keep this thing alive. Because if we have to go back to phase one, which would benefit schools, that would give us an out on that. So you might want to consider that because kids going back to school is crazy. But if you want to keep businesses alive, let's direct testing at them. And so we know that their employees aren't affecting anybody else. And the outdoor cafe thing, well, you know, that's sort of whimsy wamsy. You could go either way. Sorry I was so emotional earlier. I had to get composed. But, you know, I love this county. And I got better things to do. You ain't all heard from me in a long time. And I know you know that. All right? But I care. I genuinely care. To the point it does bring me to tears. But I am not going to give up, and I ask the citizens of Pinellas County to please, please look out for yourselves. We're all we got, all right? Mr. John Mr. Wayne ain't John Wayne ain't coming. Thank you. you. God Thank bless you, you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. It doesn't appear that we have any other citizen to be heard. Okay, we will close the public comments. Um, First item is no, item 31. Agenda item number 31 is case number CW 20-10. It's a proposal by the City of Clearwater to amend the countywide plan map from residential, low, medium, retail and services, recreation, open space and preservation to multimodal corridor and preservation regarding 26.3 acres more or less located at 24323 and 24479 U.S. Highway 19 North. The public hearing was properly advertised. The affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received. The matter is properly before the authority to be heard. Do we have any questions from the commission? Move approval, Madam Chair. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion from, I forget how to do this. A motion from Commissioner Long, second from Commissioner Welch. All in favor, please. Oh, public comment. Oh, public comment. I knew that. At do we have time, anybody who would like to comment? If there are any members of the public that wish to comment on this agenda item number 31, uh, please go ahead and raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting or hit star nine if you're on the telephone. And Madam Chair, we don't have anybody that wishes to be heard on this item. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. We have a motion from Commissioner Long, second from Commissioner Welch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item next, item 32. Agenda item number 32 is case number CW20-11. It's a proposal by the City of Largo to amend the countywide plan map from public, semi-public to retail and services regarding 1.06 acres, more or less, located at 2188 58th Street North. The public hearing was properly advertised. An affidavit of publication has been received for filing and no correspondence has been received. The matter is properly before the authority to be heard. Questions from the commission? Will of approval, Madam Chair. Thank you. Second. Okay, we have a, <laughs> do we have any public comment? At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to comment on agenda item 32, please raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting or hit star nine on the telephone. And Madam Chair, there is nobody that wishes to speak on this item. Okay, well, we have a motion from Commissioner Long, second from Commissioner Welch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 33. Agenda item number 33 is case number CW 20-12. It's a proposal by the City of Largo to amend the countywide plan map from public semi-public to residential low medium regarding 5.01 acres, more or less, located at 2050 58th Street North. The public hearing was properly advertised and the, avita the affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received and the matter is properly before the authority to be heard. Okay, questions from the commission? 
Move approval, Madam Chair. Thank you. Second. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have any uh, public comment? At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to comment on agenda item 33, please raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting or hit star nine on the telephone. And Madam Chair, there are no members of the public that wish to be heard on this item. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Long, second from Commissioner Welch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? <laughs> okay. Um, item 34. Item number 34 is a proposed ordinance amending the countywide rules relating to the residential rural and residential very low land use categories. This is the first public hearing. The public hearing was properly adver advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. Um, we did receive four emails in support of the proposed ordinance. The matter is properly before the authority to be heard. Thank you. Move Mr. approval. Anders. Move oh. approval. Okay. There's really no action necessary okay. on this since oh, it's the okay. first hearing. You really just need to take public comment if there is any. Do we have any public comment? Madam Chair, we have Commissioner Steele that has her hand up on this oh, item. Sorry. Thank you. I was just wanting to know clarity as to what um, annexations have already taken place and those in process. don't have to answer now, we but have, maybe we, we probably next. have we one. Do. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, I don't have the answer to that today. We know there was one uh, annexation uh, related to the Pioneer Homes North Lake development. I believe there was another small one in Tarpon Springs since then. I will have that information for the second hearing. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, moving on to item 35. Item number 35 is a legislative petition to vacate submitted by Christopher D. Muller, Laura T. Muller, Raymond B. Bennett, and Deborah J. Schaefer for the 80-foot wide right-of-way of Illinois Avenue lying between lots 6, 7, and 8, block 135, and lots 9, 10, 11, and 12, block 130, map of Sutherland, also the 20-foot wide alley right-of-way lying between lots 7 and 8, block 135, and lots 9 and 10, block 135, map of Sutherland. The public hearing was properly adv advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. Letters of no objection have been received from the appropriate parties, and all interested parties have been notified as to the date of the public hearing. We did receive one email in opposition to the petition. The matter is properly before the board to be heard. Thank you. Do we have a staff presentation? We do. We do. Andrew. Good evening, Commissioners. Andrew Pupke, Division Director, Facilities and Real Property Division. Brian, if we could advance to the third slide. Thank you. One more back, please. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Commissioners, the petitioners are seeking to vacate two separate right-of-ways. Uh, those are both uh, highlighted in the red checkerboard, red and white checkerboard. The first is a 20-foot alley right-of-way, which is the smaller one to the south. And the second right-of-way is an 80-foot right-of-way to the north, which is also known as Illinois Avenue. The county does not object to the vacation of the 20-foot right-of-way. However, the county does object to the 80-foot right-of-way vacation uh, based upon access to the trail as well as future drainage needs. At this point, I'd like to turn over the presentation to Blake Lyon, who will provide some of the background information. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Blake Lyon. I'm the Director of Building and Development Review Services, and I'm one of the members of the county team that looks at these petition to vacate requests. Brian, if you would back up for me for a minute. Um, so just to give you an indication of where this property is located, it's up in the Crystal Beach, Ozona area, uh, just west of the Pinellas County Trail. Um, as Andrew mentioned to you, there are two aspects that are uh, being considered tonight, the vacation of the alleyway. If, if you'll advance one slide, please, Brian. Um, the Mullers own the property that's identified in that uh, pink-purple area and then also the one directly to the south in the orange area. 
as well as the two properties on the opposing side of 9th Street. So 9th Street is the north-south street that you see there in the middle of the image. Um, the other portion of the properties up there in the green and darker blue that you see on the north side of Illinois um, are under the same ownership but are two separate uh, parcels that are identified. The one in the dark blue is currently vacant. And then you have the turquoise property um, at the far end of Illinois that is also individually and privately owned. Um, so the request is to vacate those portions. Uh, again, Andrew mentioned that we don't have an objection to the vacation of the alley, which is that southern portion that's in the red dashed area. If you'll advance, Brian, one more. Uh, what you're seeing here, the image on the left is an aerial photograph, again, identifying the two uh, areas of request vacation. The image on the right is a, a screenshot of the county's utility layers. And I understand that it is complicated in its um, graphic illustration, but it, it really serves to the point that there are quite a few utilities that are located and existing within that Illinois right-of-way. So that's the upper of the two polygons that you see in the kind of in the red color. What you'll notice is that this graphic itself has green lines which represent the sewer mains and sewer laterals. It has the blue lines on there that represent the water mains and laterals, and then kind of the pinkish purple, which is the reclaimed. What you don't see on this image as well is um, the natural gas, the uh, telephone, the cable, uh, and the other utilities that are also provided in that. And so part of the objection that the staff has to the vacation of the Illinois is just the overall amount and volume of uh, utilities that are in that area. And the county's requirements necessitate that those have both vertical and horizontal separations. So it is quite a, a utilized piece of public right of way, uh, even though you don't have a tremendous amount of um, vehicular traffic that accesses the trail. On the next slide, you'll see a little bit of kind of the orientation from an oblique view to show some of the existing development that is in the neighborhood. And as we continue to advance uh, through the slide, you'll see this image is standing at the intersection of 9th Street and Illinois, looking east towards the Pinellas County Trail. And what you'll see in this image is that on the far right side of that image, you have a kind of a yellow dashed line. That's the approximation of the existing property line. So everything that you see uh, that extends from, the, from that right side of the image up to about the middle of the image where you see the gravel roadway is all part of the public right of way. And that's the area of concern that staff has, the amount of improvements that have been placed in the public right of way um, and basically privatized that, that public asset. The roadway itself is um, improved with gravel. In the shadow of the palm tree there, you see a little bit in the foreground of, of Illinois Street, there's a, there's a uh, small valve cover um, that you can kind of indicate, and that's the location of the water line. So the water line runs along the southern end of that gravel uh, towards the trail. And then just to the left of that on the, on the north side of the gravel roadway is where the, the approximation of the sewer line runs. And then as you go to the next slide, you also see um, this is the northern half of the right-of-way, and there's some ribbons and stakes that identify the proximate location of the, of the property line, and you'll see the overhead utilities that are also in that area, and then this is the general location of the reclaimed water. And so there's quite a bit of activity and utilization of that, that right-of-way for the infrastructure purposes. As we continue down, uh, the gravel roadway, and you see in this image, this is an access, uh, a, a photograph of what was at one time the public access to the Pinellas Trail. And because of the private improvements and the landscaping, that has really grown over and it really serves to privatize that public access point. And, and it really makes it uh, uninviting in a lot of people's opinion. Not only do you have to duck, but you just don't feel uh, potentially safe or, or, or like you're in a spot where you should be welcome to connect to the trail. As we continue to the next slide, um, this is coming back out onto 9th Street. This is looking at the property where the alley vacation is being requested, kind of in the central portion of the photograph. To the left, you'll see a recent photograph of the home that's currently under construction. Um, and then the right, that the, the left side of the image is really that property, if you recall back to the early slides uh, that was kind of identified in the pink, 
and the right is the one that was identified in the orange. And so this is the location of the alley that's being requested and, and that the county does not object to the vacation of the alley. The next image um, comes back to uh, looking south along 9th Avenue. And again, you see those valve covers of the water line that I mentioned. It also shows that uh, yellow approximate boundary line and shows all the improvements that have extended out into the 9th Street right of way. This has a, a concern uh, from a staff perspective because this street has no uh, curb and a raised curb or gutter. And so um, 9th Street does get a fair bit more traffic. And, and so the improvements in 9th Street represent a safety concern. If somebody were to lose control of their vehicle and, and um, collide with one of the trees or with one of the raised planters, that could present uh, a life safety issue. And so that's a concern for the county um, as well. If you'll proceed. Now we're going back and looking um, at, again, along Illinois, we're looking towards kind of the southeast in this image. You'll notice uh, a little bit to the left, just to the right of the palm tree that's there in the foreground, uh, is that tunnel of light that we talked about, which was the access to the trail. And what you're seeing, uh, or what you're not seeing behind the palms in the center of the image is that there's actually a koi pond that has been built um, also in the public right of way or partially in the public right of way. And that's uh, kind of gives you a, a, a breath of the amount of improvements that have uh, been constructed uh, within the public right of way. The next image pans basically uh, around to the back to the um, west and shows you again kind of the approximation of the property lines and begins to show you the extent of the improvements that have been in hardscaping landscaping, uh, various different improvements. One of the other things that um, Kelly Levy will come up and talk to you about in a minute is um, some of the drainage concerns that we have in the area. And what you'll see in this image is that because of the buildup of those improvements, um, there really is not an ability to collect stormwater in that area. And it, and it and ultimately ends up shedding the water further to the north. Um, we'll have a di digital elevation uh, map that we'll show you in a little bit and it shows you kind of a, you can see where the water collects and we've had some drainage complaints and concerns uh, in the area that we'll want to we'll want to try to address and speak to but as i continue through this tries to take you back a little bit uh, to the time the, the property was originally purchased in around the 2004 time frame and this is circa 2006 you'll see the pre-existing house that was there in the upper left-hand corner of the image, you'll see um, the trail, and then separating the trail um, from that grass area is a row of vegetation. And then you can see the degree of, of kind of just blank uh, landscaping or grass there. So that's prior to any of those improvements uh, being, being made. And then as we move forward into the next image, you'll start to see, this is now 2007, the amount of improvements that are starting to come into that area. Uh, the county became aware of this, and in 2008, our public works department issued a uh, red tag asking for the removal of those items from the, the county right-of-way, and, and that has got, gone unanswered and unaddressed. In fact, even after that 2008 red tag, the next image shows 2010, and really you see the full extent. Of, not only did it um, not cease at that point, the request of the county, it actually extended further beyond that. Um, so, you know, we have this concern about the amount of improvements that are in the area that date back to 2008, but even more recently in the last decade or so. You may recall that a similar item came before the commission in around 2015 timeframe where the millers were asking to vacate all of 9th Street um, and the intent was to have Ohio terminate in a cul-de-sac and then vacate 9th Street up to Illinois and allow for the private property to extend across what was then the roadway. Um, we're requesting that, that those improvements in the county right-of-way be removed um, both on 9th Street and Illinois to preserve Illinois intact um, and allow us to do the necessary uh, infrastructure maintenance in those areas and potentially address some of the drainage issues. The couple remaining slides that we have in this presentation really just try to dictate some of the county's process and procedures that we've gone through. 
about querying the different departments, talking to the different utilities. Um, the next slide has a kind of a chronology of the different uh, opportunities that we've tried to meet and talk through different discussion points uh, with the applicant to make sure that they knew and explore different opportunities and, and uh, alternatives that might exist uh, given the, the county staff's objection to those. Um, and then the final slide is just a, a, a staff recommendation. But before we conclude the staff presentation, I wanted to invite Kelly Levy up to talk a little bit more specifically about the drainage issues and concerns that the county has in that regard. So Brian, if you have the digital elevation map, if you wouldn't mind putting that one up, I would appreciate it. Give me one moment, please. Thank you, Brian. Um, commissioners, I'm Kelly Levy, the Public Works Director. And, um, you know, one of the things that we look at, uh, the code kind of gives us, a you know, some guidance as to criteria for consideration when we're evaluating these types of requests. And one of those elements is whether there is a present or future need for the right of way for public vehicular or pedestrian access, public utility corridor, or stormwater environmental maintenance or improvement projects. And in this particular case, um, towards the right of the photo, you see a, a large green area on the other side of the trail. Thank you. And that is a, a large stormwater pond um, that when we get significant rainfall, it surcharges. It cannot go south to Ohio. The Ohio drainage system to the south is already at capacity, so it surcharges, goes to the north, is over the trail and comes across to Illinois. And we have a known, you know, stormwater hotspot there. Um, you know, we, it is ranked, has been ranked by this, the Stormwater Technical Committee. Um, even though other projects have, have taken priority, it is, it is still on our list and still something that we need to address. At this time, the, the plan would be to collect the water there uh, through like a graded inlet and pipe system, taking it down Illinois. And across to the north, you see a purple arrow headed north there. Um, there is a ridge. And so south of, you know, south of Illinois, the elevation is, is high. It's, it's at a, higher. It's at eight. North of Illinois, the elevation drops to five. And so we would bring it down and across so that it can hit that ditch to the north and flow north away from Ohio. We don't, we can't add any more water to Ohio uh, without a complete upgrade to that system. And just for um, to comparison's sakes, we did kind of look at, you know, what would it take to upgrade Ohio? And it is a 54 inch pipe, it's very large. We don't know that we have sufficient right away, but let's just for, ex if we did have it, what would a preliminary cost estimate look like? That was about 720,000 to run a, a, a dual pipe down Ohio versus this improvement, which um, right now costs out at $60,000. So we felt that um, our recommendation to retain the Illinois right away for that drainage improvement was a, a benefit to the community. Um, and that's why we were recommending um, to uh, support the alleyway, but to retain the Illinois right away. Brian, if you wouldn't mind uh, just going back to the presentation and then if you could go to that uh, early image where it has the multiple lots in the different colors, I would appreciate it. Yes, sir. Give me one moment. There you go. Thank you very much. Um, the last point that I wanted to really discuss a little bit is you'll see in the staff report that's provided, we talk about um, the staff recommendation against the uh, vacation. However, should the commission decide that they do wish to vacate uh, Illinois right away as well, one of the things that we wanted to make sure uh, was considered in that in particular is the remaining property at 945 Illinois, which is that farthest uh, to the east in the turquoise color. Uh, because that property would no longer front onto a public right-of-way, there would be a need to grant a variance for um, the fact that it does not extend out onto the public right-of-way. 
and there would also be a corresponding public, or excuse me, a, a access easement that would allow that property owner still to have the right to get back to that property unencumbered in such a way. So we, we certainly wanted that to be part of the consideration should the commission uh, disagree with the staff recommendation and go ahead uh, with the vacation. The other piece that I wanted to mention to you all um, was simply the idea of we have, as I mentioned earlier, the house on the pink lot there is under construction. Uh, we have tied the occupancy of that home to the removal of those improvements within the right of way. And there was some question or concern about whether that was um, the appropriate mechanism to do so. And one of the other alternatives that we've discussed with the applicant's representative is the possibility of bonding for work in the right of way. As Kelly mentioned, there's a need to do a drainage project in that area. Um, because that's not currently identified in the CIP, um, it, would, it would be several years in the making of doing that. If there's a desire to allow for some of those improvements to remain in the Illinois right of way, we would request that we go through and do a um, project cost evaluation and bond for the removal of that those, those improvements. So that the bond value is 110% of that cost. If they don't remove the, the improvements within a certain time period, we can call that bond and then remove that uh, stuff uh, as a result of that. We do feel that the improvements taken out of the 9th Street are paramount to the public safety and we would recommend that those happen immediately. So with that, I'll conclude my comments. And if you have any further questions, uh, any of us are here to respond. Thank you. Yes, Commissioner Justice. Thank you. On that slide, uh, thank you, Blake. On the slide, can you uh, talk about the uh, who owns which properties on the north side, the three different on the north side of Illinois? The, the green property and the blue property are, are owned by the same owner. I believe it's the Schaefer's, if I remember correctly. Um, and so they, although they are independent tax parcel IDs, they are owned by the same entity. Uh, the blue property is currently vacant. Right, uh, and that's the one where we received the drainage complaint uh, that that we alluded to. We have a photograph. There's a property to the north, off of Wisconsin, that had submitted that and represented those concerns. And then the the one to the farthest right is independently owned. That's right. And then my other question would be, I guess for Kelly maybe, but talk about the the plan for Illinois. Um, I know you said it's not in our immediate plan, but what would the plan be? What would that actually physically look like? What kind of drainage components would that be on Illinois that you'd be talking about? Right now, what we're looking at is basically a graded inlet. So you've seen them on the ground. They're just like a huge grate, and the water spills over. It goes into the grate. And then we would pipe it across 9th to the, or down, down Illinois to 9th, and then up the ditch, yes, up the 9th Avenue, 9th Street drainage system. So you'll see where it says the TRL and Pinellas Trail. Just to the just to the left of that near the just past the dotted red line would be the proximate area of the storm inlet. It would stay piped along the southern half of that right of way over to the southwest corner of the intersection and then cross yes. going north up mm -hmm. into that ditch. Yeah. So would that drainage feature at the trail point, that's not an actual drainage to where it would interfere. If you got what you recommend as far as clearing and access to the trail and everything like that, that drainage feature wouldn't interfere with access to the trail or would it? Uh, no, no, it would be at a grade. Oh, on a grade. And, and then it would be piped underneath, correct. Yeah. Okay. It wouldn't be an open ditch system. Okay. There's approximately um, 20 to 30 feet between where the trail access historically was and the edge of the right of way. So there's, there would be plenty of room for both. Okay, thank you. Mr. Peters. Thanks, I, I, this may be for Kelly, so, or, or either one of you, but when you said there's a little drainage, it doesn't appear that there's any ditch drainage currently? There's none. So um, I know you said we have nothing in the works, but is there a plan, a study planned? And if there is, how long would that take to do it? If there is one planned, and if there isn't one planned, if we were to do one, what would be the timeline? Um, 
there is actually a drainage ditch there along 9th Street on the west side of 9th to the north. So we would be connecting into an existing system. Okay. Okay. Um, and right now we're working on two other large um, drainage and roadway projects in Crystal Beach that are scheduled through construction and to 2023, I believe is the schedule. So it would come after that. And how long would something like that take? Honestly, that is a very re relatively quick job. Um, I would so if we were going to do if if okay, so we wouldn't start the study till 2023, but it's a quick job. So we have a preliminary sketch when, on it. Uh, and then how long would it take to do the improvements? A few months. At max, so maximum. we're thinking at best 2024, maybe 2025. Depends if we start construction and we could go to, um, if we, I mean, excuse me, we start design, um, it's a permitting exemption because we're tying into an existing drainage system. So there's really no um, permitting hurdles. So we could go to construction in 23. We could finish design and then move forward after those two. I thought we wouldn't even start the study till 23. No, no, we're, we have it in our stormwater technical committee. It's been ranked already and our, our stormwater engineers, because I did ask them for preliminary cost. I wanted to know what it looked like as far as, you know, upgrading Ohio versus taking this route. And so they did some uh, preliminary um, sketches and cost estimating. For so me. we wouldn't need a study? No, not a detailed study. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, Professor Eggers. Yeah, um, well, I, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just surprised that it's taken so long to get to. I mean, we found out about this in 08. Red tagged it in 08, and here we are in 2020. So, are we? Are you saying we really don't have mechanisms in place to enforce that, except uh, for say a, a occupancy? Uh, like we're talking about right now. Well, and keep in mind, so you're right, we red tagged it in 2008. I can't really speak to why that didn't, uh, why there wasn't more emphasis put on at that time. I, I wasn't with the county at that time. Uh, when I arrived in 2014 was when the Mullers were pursuing the project that involved the vacation of 9th Street, uh, and it would have resulted in a cul-de-sac on Ohio. And so that came before the commission, that project was uh, declined and then we've been working with the Mullers over the course of the last you know five years or so on trying to come up with different project alternatives different design stuff and yes it's been met with uh, changing involvement of different people on the applicant side different response different design iterations different uh, discussion points so if um if we do end up allowing them to maintain some of those improvements on Illinois, do you are you prepared to give a list of improvements that we need from them to improve the access to the trail? Yes, we certainly and and part of one of those design considerations that I mentioned before was the county recommending access, whether that be at the Illinois location uh, and open back up through basically pulling back of that vegetation, or we even presented the alternative of designing something down at the Ohio and 9th Street intersection uh, and doing something like that. So we can certainly give an indication of what that would look like and, uh, and what contributions can be made to making that happen. Okay, and then on 9th Street, um, the, there's right away along the, that goes up into some of the improvements that they've done. You're concerned about that. Is there a way that we can keep an easement over that and give them the property so that they maintain the the the, um, the, the risk the, or the primary concern that the staff has and I, I may have to defer to the county attorney on that is just the amount of improvements that are in that right of way there's not as much of a concern from a utility conflict like there is on Illinois it's really the fact that those private improvements have extended out into the public right of way so we don't have the clear zone we don't have the safety um, okay. measures that we would normally so somebody that's traveling on there that lost control and hit those uh, you know ran into one of those trees or the raised planters that presents a, a risk for the county because we knew about those improvements and, and didn't remove them yeah the um, allowing them to use that right away on Illinois um, 
I wouldn't even think about allowing that in my own mind, given that it's been 12 years. But the fact that it's been 12 years and we've not somehow not um, made it happen right. g gives me a little pause and maybe a way to work with them as long as they can improve that road. I do like the idea of bonding the project, uh, right. removal of the stuff when we need to do it for, for the project. But um, it's never going to be a convenient time with all those improvements. In yeah. There. So. And I, I should uh, give them credit. On the, on the west side of 9th Street, there were a lot of landscaping boulders you may have seen. And, mm -hmm. and, and those used to extend out all the way to the roadway, which were also in the public right of way. And at our request, they moved them back onto private property. So there has been some, you know, some accommodation along the way. It's just those that were more permanent installed we've we've run into some reservation about removing those from a public safety standpoint correct right okay i think that's all for now thank you thank you madam chair we so, have commissioner seal also with a question just fyi okay go ahead commissioner seal thank you um so would there be a possibility of of, of vacating a smaller right away um instead of the 80 feet and then um with all the utilities in Illinois, is there going to be room for a stormwater pipe? So when and we look, oh, sorry. Please. Finally, my <laughs> final Kelly's question <laughs> is, um, like you mentioned, being able to possibly do the trail connection at, down at Ohio and Ninth. Um, I actually went and drove and walked the properties all around there and looked for different access for the trail and other things. and. I do think that there's room for something different to happen, um, maybe some more compromise, but um, let's, let's, I guess we'll wait and see from the petitioners. But as you said before, the other things is across the street um, on Ninth, directly across from their property, they own that entire piece of parcel, as well as I believe the one on Ninth north of Illinois. I just wanted to confirm that where the um, stormwater ditch is already. Let me clarify okay. that portion of it. So the image that you see up here has the orange kind of triangular shaped parcel on the southern. There is on the opposing side of 9th Street, on the west side of 9th Street, there is one lot that's there. It's where the majority of those landscape boulders are kind of lined up in rows. Yeah. That same alley that you're seeing on the east side of Ninth also extends to the west side of Ninth. So that's kind of the demising line. And then there's another parcel directly across to the west side from the pink. So those are actually two lots. And those are under common ownership uh, as well. So the Mullers own. And that's in part where the 2015 request was, is vacating the Ninth Street would have you know, assembled all of those pieces of property together in, in one lot. Uh, but now they basically you know, have four corners of, of that along that section of 9th Street. So that addresses um, kind of the current ownership as I understand it. Um, the image that you'll see up here shows Ohio in the left, lower left corner. The location of the um, discussion is basically where the cursor is now. Uh, there's a, there's a um, kind of a little bit of an informal community path that people have kind of walked through. And it, it still would require some benefit of improvement. It's just a lot of overgrown vegetation and kind of what we refer to as a goat path. I mean, it's people, not goats. But, <laughs> you know, that's the idea is people have been using those, those connection points in there. So formalizing that, making it a little bit more inviting and welcome is certainly one idea that exists. Um, Commissioner Seals' comment about concern about um, proximity or distancing requirements up in Illinois. Really, that's part of why we're asking that the improvements um, south of the gravel roadway right now be removed because that does represent uh, in the order of 20 to 30 feet of right of way that we currently don't have access and utilization for. And so that's really where uh, the stormwater accommodation can go. Is, is in that. It allows us for ample separation from the existing water and sewer lines, gets that physical separation and, and makes that happen through that in a more meaningful way. So I think that addresses the question. Okay. So I guess I'm surprised that they could even get a permit to build a new house on that property <laughs> with the red tag on there, knowing, well, maybe there was a disconnect there that they were not going to get a CO if 
they yeah. didn't vacate that right away. We have definitely Were they told back then that they needed to we have definitely tried right to work again? with them and tried to make sure we can address that. That's why we originally tied it to the CO. We felt, we thought at a, at a this was all pre-COVID, so we thought that the, that the home would be done in plenty, I mean, or give us ample enough time to get the re removal and the, this whole discussion. And because it's pushed back several months, we're, we're nearing the time of the CO for the home. And so we felt, well, I'm not sure that that's the, position we've no longer we want to continue to take and not allow them to occupy their newly built home so we started looking for other solutions and other alternatives so that's that's why we well so the alternative you talked about with having a bond on the piece of the property that, on all those improvements that they put onto illinois you wouldn't have to give them a right away you just have a condition that if we ever need to I mean, they're asking for the right of way because they can't get their CO, right? Correct. The, the condition for the CO was that either the right of way be vacated or the, or the improvements be removed. And the concern that we've heard from the staff level is that because we don't have a, a stormwater project in the CIP and a specific date for when we're going to need it, the concern was how do we give them the ability to get into their home, to do, uh, you know, to, to utilize their home, but still have some degree of assurance that we're going to, you know, be able to do that stormwater project when it comes about. And so, because this is because this is public right of way, we have the ability to use the bonding mechanisms. We don't do bonds on private property. So what that allows us to do is to say, okay, we would go out and get a cost estimate for the removal of all of that improvement on in the Illinois right of way. And that bond would come up at 110% of that value. Now, to the extent that they wanted to preserve and maintain a lot of those improvements, again, there's, there's raised planter beds, there's the a lot of vegetation, there's the koi pond. If they wanted to relocate that, let's say to the other two properties or somewhere else on that property and you know, reutilize that and not lose that investment uh, to the full extent, then they can do that work. If it's our contractors that are coming in and doing that, they may not be quite so accommodating. So, uh, <laughs> sure you know, they <laughs> they'll get the they'll get the stuff out of there and they'll and they'll move on. So we thought that that gives us a little bit more uh, time certainty to it. You know, because we can identify when that drainage project comes in, we can have that bond. It gives us that assurance. We would encourage that the bond value be, again, for 110% of the value and then some inflation rate because the expectation is, uh, to Commissioner Peters' earlier point, is if it's 2023, 2024, we would want to make sure we're talking about the value of the dollar at that time, not, not currently. Right, for sure. Um, okay, great. Do we have any more questions of staff for now? Okay, let's hear from the applicant then. Uh, good evening, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Administrator, um, County Attorney. Todd Pressman, 202nd Avenue South, number 451 in um, St. Petersburg, Florida. I'm here today with Tom Radcliffe. Tom is our engineer. Uh, he's been planning drainage projects in Pinellas County and elsewhere for 45 years. With LaVaris Barr, who had been in Pinellas County since the 50s, and with uh, Laura and Chris Mueller, who are the property owners. What we're hearing today from our recent meetings, our most recent meetings with the staff is a much different story. We did not learn until Friday that the staff even had a plan. Our last meeting with the staff, uh, with Blake and the other folks who always do a good job and are always good to work with, was that they had to do an area-wide drainage study. Uh, they didn't know when they were gonna do it. They didn't know how they were gonna do it. They didn't know who was gonna do it. They didn't know how big it was gonna be. So we suddenly found ourselves with a plan of some nature on one page that indicates where drainage is supposed to go. And I can assure you, we're gonna bring Tom up who's gonna discuss this with you and who's going to tell you why Illinois is not the best place to do it. But to hear a number thrown out of $720,000 versus $60,000, the first time we've ever heard it. So we're really out of sync there. 
Um, as far as we're concerned, the cart is way, way in front of the horse. Our understanding is we didn't know what the horse was even gonna look like. Uh, but Tom, who's an expert with these matters, has engineered for drainage Lake St. George, Cypress Run, Boot Ranch, Briar Creek, Meese Hospital, many, many more. So as you all know, what we're proposing is a vacating of the area that is concerned of 80 feet and returning back to the citizens and the county a 40-foot area that will maintain ingress and egress, utilities and drainage. Um, we have for many, many months worked with the staff very well and very diligently. Um, they did mention about a prior complaint. It wasn't by these folks, it was by a renter. It was in 2016 that was opened, addressed, and that was closed. So there's been no complaints in four years. So as far as we know, that's the current status of neighbors in the area. Um, what we're asking for is your consideration with Liberty is to approve the two vacations. You've heard the one is very simple, very straightforward but to approve the two vacations, which then will include the easements which have been provided. Barring that, what we like to do is we like to continue to work with staff and work with them on a compromise because our engineer, who has vast experience, has indicated that he thinks it's absolutely the wrong way to go. There's a much better way to go. We would ask you at the same time to eliminate the CO condition for all the removals keep the application pending so we can come back before the commission work with the staff to address the issues. And as Blake has also said, there's a variance filed for the one homeowner, which is pretty much a normal thing just to make sure that they remain whole. So we do have the test of time, right or wrong, and the Mueller's have moved into the encroachment. We have the test of time that it has worked, that there's been no complaints, virtually no complaints. The last time uh, this issue was here, I wasn't representative. There were many neighbors in opposition. I don't know if there's any here today, but we don't think there are. The Mullers will work good with that. Um, so with that, I do wanna hand out a couple more photos and ask Tom to come up and speak to the plan that we just learned about. If I may uh, get these to the commissioners. Good evening. Uh, Can we, get a digital picture we don't have a way to project it. The, really? the digital elevation picture. Oh, I can bring that back up. That'd be helpful. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, my name's Tom Radcliffe. I'm with a firm called Laveris Bar and Stevens. Uh, do you need me to state the address and that sort of thing for the record? Mm -hmm. uh, 30725 US Highway 19 North, Palm Harbor, Florida, 34684. Uh, appreciated Todd's introduction. I have been an engineer here in Pinellas County for over 45 years, and I've done a lot of drainage design. I'm not trying to brag, it's 45 years is a long time. A lot gets done in 45 years, especially in a rapidly developing area like Pinellas County. Uh, I became acquainted with this site, oh my gosh, probably 2014, when the Mueller's came to us and asked us to look at uh, the drainage on 9th and the potential for vacating 9th, 9th uh, Avenue there. And we all know that didn't happen. But now for the first time Friday, we've had identified to us the drainage problem. For years we've been talking about drainage problems out here and we keep asking where, what, give me specifics. Uh, be, I'd be more than happy to look at how to fix them. But now we finally have one. And what we have is that area that was, has been identified there in green. It's shaded green because it's low. That it has to do with the elevation. And what that is, it's a stormwater detention area. It's built as part of a, a permitted project on the uh, north side of Ohio there well, with an outfall structure which drains into the 54 inch pipe. Uh, it was designed and by the way, the research, I'm a little bit limited because I've, again, I've only had since Friday. It was designed back in 1988. The construction on it was completed in 1992. Swift Mud didn't accept the permit uh, completion on it until 2006. 
because it appears in a little bit of history I could find there was a lot of history. And it's, uh, it's a pond that, that serves two purposes, stormwater attenuation and water quality. The water quality measures are taken care of through something called effluent uh, filtration, which is basically high-rate sand filtering. It looks like from the record in 2011, Swift Mud contacted the property owner and told him it was time to maintain it and recertify it. And the property owner, I don't see anywhere in the record where they answered. In fairness to the property owner, with COVID, the Swift Mud folks, the record keeping folks are not working. So if it wasn't posted correctly in the record, and that happens, it may well have been addressed and, and just it's not showing up. So I, right now I have no one to ask that question of. But the important thing here is that pond, when it was designed, wasn't designed to overflow across the trail. The criteria of design in that day was a 25 year storm, 24 hour duration, and the pond volume had to be contained within the banks of the pond. And what I'm hearing is that the county's experience is that it's not happening that the pond's overflowing, it's running across the trail, and it's flooding areas to the west of the trail. And what I'm hearing is we're going to take taxpayer dollars and we're going to correct a private problem. That makes no sense to me as a taxpayer at all. If that pond is out of compliance with its permitting, the property owner is the one responsible for it, not the public. I've dealt with many, many clients who have had projects that are out of compliance with permits, both from the county standpoint and a swift mud standpoint, public money should not be used for that purpose. The second issue I have with all of this is the route. Right now we have a 54 inch pipe that runs down Ohio and I hear it's at capacity and I'm sure it is. But the flooding in that pond occurs very early in the storm when that pipe still has plenty of capacity. Until someone's done a proper drainage study of this to say that pipe can't be used to help facilitate outfall of that pond, uh, considering when it's already the outfall, if you look there on the diagram, you see that purple pipe, that's the pipe's outfall structure to that 54 inch pipe right now, the pond's outfall structure to that 54 inch pipe. To say that doesn't work is a little bit presumptuous. I've done a lot of large uh, drainage studies I've modeled, uh, I've got right now one model I'm running in Pasco County that's 77,000 acres, if you can imagine. Uh, it's the biggest model Swift Mud's ever produced. Done a lot of modeling. And I, I could not say that without doing the study. So I have no idea how staff can say that without doing the study. Uh, the third thing I've noticed, when I look at the route down Illinois, the receiving ditch the bottom elevation of it is about the elevation five that was quoted. Not the land, but that's the bottom of the ditch. The land that pipe has to cross is sitting about at about elevation seven and a half. The minimum drain line you want to lay, uh, and, and in the past, the minimum drain line size Pinellas County's approved is an 18 inch pipe. An 18 inch pipe has a two and a quarter inch wall and a two and a quarter inch bell, which means literally the pipe would have to be laid with no cover to outfall to that ditch. Conversely, that 54 inch pipe has a bottom elevation down at sea level, much deeper. Directing water into that pipe, there would be no cover issue. So when I, when I hear all of this, maybe, maybe it does need a little more study, uh, but we've had plenty of time to do that study and it hasn't happened. We hear about the problem the Friday before the meeting. Uh, another thing to consider here, if you do go ahead and vacate Illinois Avenue, part of the proposal is to give back a drainage and utility easement over a, a strip of land that's a minimum of 40 foot wide and actually is wider at the other, other end to accommodate any future drainage pipe need that might be there and to accommodate the existing utilities. Uh, there's no problem with laying the drain line in that 40 foot easement area. It, I can show you easily on a plan, uh, great ways of doing it. Uh, 
they were talking about laying it on the south side of the easement where the existing improvements are, but it, that kind of really makes no sense because it, it makes you cross two lines you don't have to cross that are gonna be in conflict with any drainage pipe you do. So I don't quite understand that. I think you'd do the end run around them and go north of them. But you know, that's part of the proposal to give back a drainage and utility easement and the utilities that are in that right of way only really serve the property owners involved in the vacation. They are not serving anyone else in the subdivision. So beyond that, that's, that's really all I have and I'm here to answer any questions. If I could interrupt for one moment, Mr. Pressman, I have had your timer on for 20 minutes. You have eight and a half minutes remaining, just be advised. I'll just wrap up and reserve, if I may, for further comment, if, if staff or anyone else is going to speak. So as apparent to you, um, the Mueller's and I have been very active with the staff until the last few days, and that's really, I have no complaint to Blake or Kelly. They're always good to work with. I think they were trying to bring some information together quickly for the hearing. But as you can hear, I think it's very compelling. There are a lot of questions. There are a lot of issues. There are a lot of different directions to go. And we'd like to continue to work in the same capacity. I don't think it requires a bond. We can, we've been engaged and we're happy to be engaged with the staff and to be able to work towards a solution. So again, we ask you for uh, consideration and the liberty of uh, being able to move in that direction or approval of the vacation. And of course, the small vacation is, needs to be approved uh, and to deal with the uh, CO. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. <laughs> I don't have any questions. Um, I get, yes, Commissioner Rakers. Uh, you, you talked about the Illinois and you talked about the other small easement, or excuse me, the other small trail. What about the area along uh, 9th Street? Um, any, any issues with the, I mean, it sounds to me reasonable for what they're asking you all to do, but that's, that's a third piece to this, I'm just asking. When, when you say reasonable, I'm, I'm not sure. Well, they're asking you to get, get your, uh, your private property items off the right of way from a, for, from a safety perspective. We're, we do want to continue to work with the staff to make sure that 9th Street is safe and that we can save as much of the improvement as possible. So we would want to definitely work in the same direction. Yes, on 9th. Kind of like a Absolutely. Good, that's what an answer. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Sound like Madam an Chair, attorney. Yeah. I'm so, we have Commissioner Seal that also has her hand raised. And I, and I do think staff has some additional comments. Um, my question is not for Mr. Pressman, it's probably for Jewel. Um, but if we did remove the CO uh, requirement or allow the CO without any contingencies, then what teeth do we have to to make this move forward and to um, settle the situation. So. If you all remove the requirement that the improvements be re removed in order to obtain the CO and did not take action to vacate the right of way, um, the fact is it's still right of way. And so we could still move forward in an enforcement action. Frankly, we could go out there and remove the improvements um, if we wanted to. Now that, you know, again, we would be able to enforce through litigation, essentially. Assuming it's still right away. Right. And I think it makes much more sense. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to force us to file litigation to have that removed when we asked them to remove it in 2008 and nothing happened. And they could, yes, Mr. Long. I just have a couple comments, and then I'd like to make a, a motion. Um, I, well, Mr. Pressman has more time, so. Oh, oh okay. He but can, go ahead. The what? staff has more comments. Oh, <laughs> you don't know what she's going to say. Well, yeah, you don't know <laughs> what I'm going to say. My point is, if you look at the petition to vacate photo of 2006, and then you fast forward, and then you go to the one in 2010. That is a staggering amount of new vegetation on the whole entire property. And while I had an opportunity yesterday to view up close, you know, the 
real close pictures of what it looks like on the ground. It, in the big picture scheme of things, it seems to me that there, or maybe I'm mistaken, there's no real sense of urgency to take action on the 80 feet portion of this tonight because it's been languishing around since 2008. Um, clearly, it's gotten more and more vegetation on the property. We already know there aren't any plans to do anything for another two or three or four years. Whoever knows what's going to come up in the meantime to get in the way. And so I'd like us to consider approving the vacation for the 20-foot easement, as staff has recommended, and then just have staff and Todd and the Mullers continue to work on this to come to a peaceful resolution that everybody can live with. I mean, it seems like there's been an opportunity over almost a decade with no real action on our part to enforce anything to make them move it. I, I don't know. I just, it seems to me there's enough ambiguous issues going on here. They ought to be able to work it out. You know, everybody has to give a little bit, and in that theory, I don't know that we have to make a decision on that tonight. Do we? I'm just asking. Well, I think, I don't think anybody has any problem with the 20 feet. <laughs> well, can we take that up and then come back to this part? Sure, we can. Yeah, let's get that off the table. If it's We need a public comment first, oh. I think. Okay. What I, would, what I would recommend is that you perhaps kind of get to one point where you want to take Let's action so you can open up the public comment on this item one time. Yeah, you're right. Um, I guess the fact that it's been there and growing for all these years, it hasn't, it hasn't stopped. It continues to grow, and it's perfectly lovely, I have to say. <laughs> but it is gorgeous. But... I don't think we have any obligation to turn over that property just because they want it. Whether we have a, a plan right now to use it or not. I think, as a matter of fact, some of those improvements look like they're over our utilities already. Um, which is a problem for me. I mean, that's why the right of way is there. <laughs> so that we can have access to our own facilities. And I guess, I, I would want to see some contingency if we vacated the right the other right away, or I would want to say, as you're negotiating, I'd like to see other some kind of contingency that says either we can come and rip it out, or not that we would want to because that's a lot of staff time and, and labor for us too, and we don't want to have to litigate it. So I don't right. want either one of those possibilities happening. Yes, Commissioner Justice. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to hear. Um, staff as far as responding to the engineers about the drainage issue i thought that was something really interesting about the swift mud and where that water's supposed to go i think that was pretty interesting and if we could get staff to respond to that all right looks like kelly would love to um to clarify uh we did meet in february and at the february meeting i did have that digital elevation map and i did show tom their engineer that map and um we, show, we talked about, you know, the elevation issue and where we have that natural ridge and the water would go to the north. So that was not new. They knew we had a flooding problem there. They knew we had a stormwater project ranked but not planned yet, so that was not new. Um, the only part that was new was that I asked staff, because I was trying to find solutions and see if there was a viable alternative, so I asked staff to look at those two costs and see, you know, what would what would happen if we needed to upgrade Ohio versus um, going with the route, bringing it across Illinois to Ninth and sending it north. And and so just to clarify that point, yes, um, you know, uh, permitted facilities through the Water Management District, they do have a recertification requirement over a certain number of years. And yes, there is an outfall into the Ohio system. But we know that the Ohio system is surcharging because we're having other issues on the Ohio system. So that's just one of them. So we know that that pipe is surcharging. It's during, during rain events. So it isn't just that pond. 
I'm sure if it's not being ma properly maintained, sure, that's a component of it, but it's not that in and of itself. Well, that's, that's a good that you point out. That's not the only sole contributing factor to the overflow in Ohio. But so, but to the engineer's point, the folks that control that should be maintaining it better, perhaps? I haven't personally gone out and, and I mean, we have staff that will go out and look at pond compliance and to, um, see, to ensure that ponds are, you know, functioning per their approved county site plan. Swift mud, of course, we don't have jurisdiction over. Um, so usually we look at it from our site plan perspective and we can definitely do that and we, we will, but one pond, you know, performance isn't, isn't the entirety of the problem. Okay, thank you. Yes, Commissioner Peters. So um, I'm kind of on the same page as uh, Commissioner Long. I mean, I'd like to give them the 20 feet and let them move on with that part. Um, but I'd also like to keep the CO open without removal. I know they talked about um, safety on 9th, and, and I've been to that house and that property. I've driven on 9th, and, um, you know, we put medians in the middle of the road to slow traffic, and, and to me that can be even a traffic slowing or calming, and that isn't a street that I believe is a, a speeding kind of street anyways. Um, you know, they're not going 35, 45 miles an hour on that street. So um, what I would like to do is see them work with staff a little more and just keep the, the CO open and let them, let them work this out. Give them the 20 feet and then let them work this out without removal at this point and, and let them come up with a solution. I think they will. Um, and that's what I would like to see happen. Okay. Or um, even the, the, whatever the language that Todd Pressman had used, and I, maybe I wrote it down long, but, but to keep that open, so, but without removal at this point, and just let them work it out. Certainly willing to let them work on it some more. Yeah, Commissioner Walsh. So I think I'm in agreement with you. Are you saying to grant the CO when you say open? Let them, let them no. Well. Uh, Todd, can you refer what you said to me again? I wrote it down. I must have written it down wrong, and I don't want to use the wrong word. Uh, with liberty, if I may, the problem with the CO is timing, because as we've heard, the the project is not was well, is not even planned in the CIP for three years and we know those projects tend to get pulled back. The CO is gonna come due, lack of a better term, in a matter of months. So we're asking to release the CO so we can continue to work for the period of time. Audience benefit, what is a CO? CO is commercial, uh, certificate, certificate of occupancy. Of Thank you. So we did agree with the county for that condition. It's an issue of syncing and timing because again, all this is gonna occur in many years in the future, the CO occurs in a number of months. So that's why we're asking for release of the CO, only because of the timing issue. Well, I have Thank a problem with that. <laughs> I do have a problem with releasing the CO before we work this out. Because I think it so, won't get worked out. So that's exactly my thought. You've got several months, and hopefully you can get come to an agreement so the CO can be granted in a few months. So I would support that. I also uh, support what both customers Commissioner Peters and Long have said, you know, and it is beautiful work they've done there. Um, it's a classic case of asking forgiveness rather than permission. Hmm. And I'm worried about setting a precedent for that. But on the other hand, as Commissioner Eggers has said, this has been 12 years, if I can do math correctly, I am a Lakewood grad, um, <laughs> where we haven't really enforced this. So I, I you know, kind of go back to the drawing board, work with staff, and come up with an agreement, but I think we hold the CEO until they come back with an agreement. That's what I would support. Yeah, it sounds so. like there's time to do that. Oh, yeah. and it of sounds course, like there's willingness on both parts to work uh, on it. I, I served on the Hillsborough County Code Enforcement Board for many years, and to answer your question, and I think Ms. Muller can respond to the red tag, but in, in code enforcement, which is this maybe as a parallel, you have people who respond and you try and work with, so those issues move forward. People who don't respond or ignore you, you move forward with enforcement. So this is obviously as you, very apparent. We've been engaged in trying to work with staff. I do want to say and place emphasis, we have no complaint to Blake or Kelly. They're always great to work with, but you can see there's a difference of information and opinion. That's where I think that we can do a lot of work together. Well, Thank you. And they come from different departments. So Todd, Todd real quick, a good question. I think oh. Commissioner Walsh had oh, something. I'm done. Oh, oh, okay. And we also have Commissioner Seal, Madam Chair. Okay. Well, let, let her go. I've had a question or two already. <laughs> Fisher Seal. 
Um, thank you very much. Um, I tend to concur with Commissioner Welch and Commissioner Long and um, Commissioner Peters. Um, I don't think we should remove the CO because I think that gives an incentive for everyone to work together to get it done. Um, I also think that opening the trail down by Ohio Avenue off of their property should also be a consideration. I still wonder whether there could be different drainage improvements. I understand the elevation, but maybe there's a way to put a pond on one of their properties. Um, just another thought, but I do think that um, normally, and I agree with um, Commissioner Welch, this could set precedent and Normally, I would not be proceeding in this direction because I don't think you should be able to ask forgiveness and then get something in return. Um, we've always, as a commission, been pretty strict about making people toe the line, uh, especially when they've been given notice about it. Um, however, if we can work something out to the greater benefit of that area and for Pinellas County, then I think I can support that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Eggers, I forgot who. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm 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 okay with with that. I I, I I like the idea of holding the CEO. If they don't get it figured out in the next couple of months and they need to move in, then we need the bond, right? I mean, just to make sure that we get the improvements. That would certainly be an option, of course. Well, yeah, yeah. So and and uh, but I and I would like to see when you come back with the staff come back the proposed improvements on Illinois to get through. As a as a as a is an access to the trail. I mean, because right. whether you whether it is a street that we keep or we have an easement over it, um, I don't think we should be taking a public right of way and the purpose of a public use to access the trail away from this this equation. So for me, that's going to be an important component as well. I, I do want to be crystal clear that we would never ask for a trail access to be eliminated or removed. That, that's not included with today. There's some overgrowth that can be easily pulled out. So that is not the intent, nor would that ever be requested. Okay, but my, from my perspective, if, if this thing gets done so that they have access to that property, then I would be looking for a little bit more than just cutting a few branches away. And, oh, yes, of course, you're on the okay. same page. Yeah. Make sure it's a open yeah. and yeah. friendly access, yes. Yeah. Thank you. So did, <laughs> did you have something you want? Well, there's a lot more discussion. I, the key thing is whether or not there can be a um, drainage resolution other than use of that area. And, and I don't know the answer to that. That was a question that was posed before this meeting, um, you know, and now. So because otherwise you're going to need the area where the improvements have been made for that drainage improvement. But the question is, is, is there another option or, or alternative? I had our in our stormwater engineering section manager take a look at it, and he said because everything to the to the south there, those two properties that they have, they drain south to Ohio, so we don't want to send the water down to Ohio. That's where we already have the problem. So we want to send it north, not south, and that's because those two properties already drain south, and we already that system is already at capacity. It's already surcharging. That would not resolve our challenge. Okay. So that'd be incumbent upon the property owners to, to look at that to see if there's other options, understanding their concerns that they've raised. Yes, sir. And that's what Tom has look, looked at and is, wants to continue to work with, with the experts. Okay. Um, go ahead. You look like you have to say something. Well, no, I, got, <laughs> I got a few things to say, but I'd, I'd like to hear from the applicant if they want to. Oh, okay. Please finish up their time. I'm, I'm Laura Mueller. I'm one of the applicants at 920 Illinois Avenue. And I wanted to comment specifically on the 2008 red tag. That was when the reclaimed water was being put in and um, they had specifically said, oh, you need to make sure that the walls are below 18 inches and then the boulders. We had put some boulders on where they were planning to put the reclaimed water pipes. And we had moved all that. And in, my, in our mind, we had addressed the red tag item and it was sort of an afterthought of like, oh, by the way, this is also on um, county property, but we didn't hear any follow-up on that. So, you know, we've learned a lot through this process and, you know, the gravel road that was there since we've moved in in 2004, we've maintained that and re-graveled it 
several times thinking it was our driveway before we realized that was all county property. So, <laughs> you know, we, and I know that from the photographs that they show, it looks like in 2008, there was a certain set of photos and that it expanded in 2010, but that set of landscaping along 9th Street it was what was happening during the reclaimed water thing when we first learned about that. So that was all sort of at the same time. So, you know, it, it wasn't our intention to, you know, be told we're in the wrong and then continue to do wrong. So and I appreciate you guys taking the time to hear from us. Okay. Um, okay, so we, uh, do we have any public comment on the line? Madam Chair, do we have anybody in person first that oh, wishes to okay. public comment? I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Do we have a card for this gentleman to fill out somewhere? I did. Okay, great. I didn't get, oh, I did get it. I'm sorry. My name's Michael Purdy. I live at 930 Wisconsin Avenue. I'm one block north of Illinois. I share a property line with the vacant lot. Um, <clears throat> the 2008 red tag was, uh, that was a gut punch to hear tonight. The obstructions in the, uh, the right-of-way, but my property's damaged by stormwater coming off Illinois. Um, properties on my neighbor to the east and to the west. I, I know a neighbor, a catty corner neighbor on 9th have had to protect their property at the property line from stormwater off of Illinois. So I came tonight, I entered a, uh, a comment in opposition in the agenda, but I came tonight to underscore the, uh, uh, really the county staff report. And there's no question here, you, you can see, there's, we've got a problem with drainage in there. Um, Again, the 2008, it's probably my problem that I wasn't remiss in coming down to the county. In 2000, I've lived on Wisconsin since 1998, and in 2000, I started talking about, to the county about stormwater in the area. <clears throat> At the time, I asked for drainage on Wisconsin and Illinois, and I got it on Wisconsin. And from that point, I just started protecting my property from the water that was coming off of Illinois, and that's where we sit today. Um, I probably would have been down here sooner uh, if I had one of the slides back, the one applicant, Mr. Bennett, uh, he doesn't live in the property. The, he, the gentleman who owns the vacant lot and the one and the uh, the one house, he's got a renter in there, and I believe that's your complaint in 2016. I'd have been here sooner, but we have a system now in place where Mr. Bennett's tenant will drop a sump pump in that lot and and run a hose out to ninth and, mm -hmm. and empty the water that way. I mean, that's an ad hoc system that can't replace that you know, we, need, we need improvement on. Uh, beyond that, uh, proceedings like these, I always look and review the, uh, go to the municipal code and look at the criteria that the governing body has to consider petitions like this. This, this petition doesn't meet any of those criteria. I mean, county staff has already uh, established that we need utility improvement in here. I would note again, we're adjacent to the Pinellas Trail. Uh, Vacating a right-of-way adjacent to the trail, uh, we're talking about obstructions in the right-of-way here in 2020. The county could well have a future use unforeseen. Uh, I just, uh, I'd, be, I'd be in objection to this petition and any with characteristics like that, where the county's ability to address public use in the future is diminished. Um, no objection to vacating the alley. I'd ask the county commission to deny the petition to vacate the rights of way. Any questions? Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, next person, John Scopus. John Scopus. No, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Say what? Brian, do you have somebody online? Yeah, we do have two people at least that want to raise their hand. So at this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to comment on agenda item 35, please raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting or hit star nine on the telephone. Uh, Madam Chair, our first speaker is going to be Jeff Brown. Uh, Mr. Brown, if you go ahead and unmute yourself, give us your first last name, spelling, address, and you'll have three minutes to address our board. Yeah, my name is Jeff Brown. I'm at 302 Ontario in Crystal Beach. Um, I'm actually here on other agenda items, but listening into this, I've been a 25 year resident of Crystal Beach and I actually know the property very well uh, in question here. And 
after listening to all of these uh, suggestions, objections, um, I wanted to offer my concern and then also a solution um, as a local Crystal Beach slash Ozona um, resident. The gentleman that just went up there, the future use of Pinellas County, I cannot emphasize enough. Uh, that is such a great point that was not brought up um, as the influx of residents have moved to this area. And although the density and housing cannot really be uh, confined more, but we are getting more people to move here. Who knows what a 60 foot um, alley could use uh, for utility from Ozona to the bike trail. Um, I myself use the trail daily and I uh, egress and come in and out of Ozona. And there's been several times where I honestly probably didn't even know this was an alley until this meeting, to be honest with you, because that is so heavily vegetated. Um, but as I live in Crystal Beach, and among other many zoning projects in North Pinellas County, whether it's commercial or residential and real estate, the red herring that we're talking about of the drainage and, and, the, and the utilities, the fact of the matter is, it's it's a property line. And as, as a residential owner myself with several properties, I can't use the ignorance is bliss where I just didn't know. And I understand it's been there for so long, but I have several neighbors in Crystal Beach who have just had a mass exodus of their property, uh, personal property taken off of easements because the county just came through last week taking everything out of that. And now the median price income for Crystal Beach is a little less than Ozona. Never mind that. I don't think anyone would have ever thought to hire litigation. So of course we had to comply in that. Now we're talking 20 years of easement uses with fire pits and chairs and patios that we just had to clear out completely. Okay, so on top of that, I understand that the applicants uh, litigation in the drainage study was saying that, well, it stood the test of time. It just, uh, Commissioner Welsh, I can't agree more that it, this is the perfect ask for forgiveness later, where it just because it's been there doesn't mean it was ever supposed to be there. If I used every easement next to my property line that has three other adjoining property lines and a 15 foot easement as I wished, well, Pinellas County would just be in mayhem if this was the case study for what was to be supposed to be done. So I understand that you guys can work on an agreement um, I can't really rely on a CO being, you know, released or not, but there has to be action done on this because if I had property that was eminently domain taken, uh, it, was an, it was a right of way that was a corner part of the parcel. The county, not this county, a separate county, paid for that property. Mr. This Brown, I'm sorry, your time has expired, sir. Last statement, this might be abstract, but instead of the county paying for an imminent domain, perhaps the property owner can pay for the drainage that's to go in if the, if the easement is given to them. If they want that parcel, I assure you, 80 feet by 40 feet is well worth 60,000, so the taxpayer doesn't have to pay for that drainage. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Well, the 60,000 is just to pay for the removal. <laughs> well, that's probably gonna take half of that. Do we have another? Yeah, Madam Chair, our next speaker is Raymond Bennett. Uh, Mr. Bennett, if you go ahead and unmute yourself, give us your first, last name, spelling, and address, and you'll have three minutes to address the board. Um, Raymond B. Bennett, and my address is 702 Ninth Street, Palm Harbor. So I'm actually the property owner on the north side of uh, the trail that we're talking about, and I'm also a petitioner uh, with the Mullers. So I don't know if the three minutes sticks to that or not, but uh, my comment there is, is simply that um, from the year, and I think I moved in in 2002, um, you know, all of us on that uh, piece of property have continued to invest very heavily in uh, cleaning up what was uh, nothing but um, invasive species of trees and bushes. There was no visibility. Uh, I would say there was probably less access to the trail at that point in time because everything was so completely overgrown. So, you know, there has been a lot of work. Um, it is not anything, um, it's, it's whatever the opposite of an eyesore is. And uh, so I just appreciate the, uh, the commission's flexibility here in, uh, in working with us as property owners. Uh, it's limited to essentially three property owners uh, on, that, on that piece of property and we're all uh, on the petition together. I think that might be worth noting. That was my only comment. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. And Madam Chair, there are no other speakers that wish to be heard. Okay. 
What are your wishes, Mr. Eggers? Todd, what's the uh, time frame um, that you all, ex you know, working with staff? Because uh, I don't, this can't go on forever, mm -hmm. obviously. So yes, sir. we need to move it pretty post haste. So what's what's your thought on, on, on looking at this project and coming up with some other suggestion for our staff to consider? Well, um, Tom will work very quickly to put together um, his suggestions and proposal. Uh, Tom works very diligently. Um, I believe it would be a matter of months uh, until the house is ready, if that is answering your question. Until the Let me get the question answered for you. Uh, Mrs. Mueller is indicating the house will be ready in the first quarter, sometime in the first quarter of next year. So, so then so the alternative suggestion for, for for us to consider will be done by then. It would it, it have it to would be, have to be according to the then. CO, sir. Okay, so it would be done and approved before the CO. Yes, if the CO is attached uh, and not changed, then it would have to be done before then. Yes, sir. Mr. Justice. Thank you, Madam Chair. This one is uh, kind of all over the place. Um, yeah. It, uh, uh, when I first, I'd forgotten about it from when we looked at it a couple of years ago when there was a larger vacation looking for, um, and then when I heard about this time, and, and Todd, I think, has met with all of us to share the story about it, and I kind of thought, um, you know, with, in general, we should try and find a way to say yes. That's kind of what we should be doing. Um, and then I hear st staff talk about going back to 2008 issues. And then you hear Mrs. Mueller saying, no, that was something different. Um, you hear the engineer study versus our thoughts on drainage. Um, and, and it is, um, I, and I was actually, it was funny, I was talking to my neighbor this morning about this very case, because it's legislative and not quasi-judicial. So I'm allowed to do that, right, Joel? <laughs> and I hope so. <laughs> they said they said that uh, when they bought their house, and it's in the city of St. Pete, so we have a sidewalk and we have the right of way on the other side of the sidewalk, that their realtor told them that they could make any improvement they wanted on the other side of the sidewalk, but if the city ever wanted it, that was it. And so I don't know if they got that same kind of thought process when they bought this house. Anyway, long story short, I think Commissioner Seal had some interesting thoughts. If, if we want to give them one more chance to go back and work with staff, I'm all fine with that. I think Commissioner Steele had some interesting ideas about taking a more global look at it and letting our staff be creative as far as trade-offs on drainage property, access to the trail improvements on Ohio, whatever staff wants to be creative and, and give the Mueller's one more chance to kind of be creative with us to find a solution. I'm fine with that um, if that's the will of the board. Well, I would agree with that. I just want to make sure that we're not the ones that are paying to remove that stuff when the time comes to work on whatever utilities are under that street. Because clearly some of that, some of those improvements are on top of our facilities already. So I have a problem with that, but, and I have a problem with re rewarding bad behavior, but just me. Um, Is that a motion? What's the wishes of the board? We can approve the 20 foot Tonight. Jewel, so you could, and if they don't take any action, then this would just, just stand as is. Co correct. If you take no action on the 80, it would continue. Um, you could move to deny it, but if you want staff to continue having that discussion, my recommendation would be that you take no action on the 80 foot, um, the 80 foot right of way. But there is the second, of course, request on the 20 foot, which you could certainly take action on separate and apart from the 80 feet. Right. I would make a motion, Madam Chair, that we approve the 20-foot right-of-way um, request, and then we let them work from now until the end of the we'll, year. We'll do another one to continue. All right. I'd second that. Okay. And we hold the CO, right? We hold the yeah. CO. Right, right. We're not. We're part. not doing anything with that, right? Well, we don't. We don't do that. But they can't get their. Right. They can't get their CO unless they have. This Some other kind out. of deal. Yeah, worked out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Long, second from Commissioner Peters. Is there any other comments? 
for right now. And night and Ninth Street will be taken for the twenty care of. for okay. the twenty foot. Right, and the night and Ninth Street will be. What about Ninth Street? I don't think that's part of. This is just twenty foot. Yeah. What's that? This is the alley. I understand. I get that. I'm just asking. Is there any action we need to take on? No. Not okay. yet. Not on Ninth Street. Okay. Maybe that's part of the deal. Who knows? <laughs> okay. All right. All in favor of vacating the twenty foot right away alley. Aye. I say aye. Thank you. And then we will take another motion about continuing this to whenever. It sounds like maybe a... six months is an appropriate amount of time if Mrs. Mueller indicated that the home wouldn't be done until after the first of the year. We're in July. At least that gives a time period within which we can expect some sort of action to be taken. Right. So then maybe... I move to continue this issue until after the first, until January. Okay. Um, okay. With the hope that we come up with they will. a negotiated deal. They will. Okay. We have a motion from Commissioner Long, second from Commissioner Welch. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? We have a motion carries 6-1. Is that, is that what I saw? Commissioner Seal, did you vote no? I voted yes. Oh, okay. Sometimes there's a delayed reaction there. Sorry, I was trying to wave my hand. Okay, <laughs> I didn't see it. Okay, uh, motion carries unanimously. Okay, item, um, where are we? 36. All right, item number 36 is a legislative petition to vacate submitted by John Skopos to vacate a 12-foot wide alley lying west of DeSoto Boulevard and east of Moss Rose Avenue, lying in Block 1, Crystal Beach Heights. The public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. Letters of no objection have been received from the appropriate parties. Uh, Duke Energy's letter is contingent upon the retention of a 12-foot wide drainage and utility easement. All interested parties have been notified as to the date of the public hearing. Um, I will note that there was one late submission that the clerk's office did receive today um, in opposition to this petition to vacate. Uh, the matter is properly before the board to be heard. Okay. Um, we hear from staff. Ma'am. Good evening once again. Andrew Pupke, Division Director for Facilities and Real Property. Brian, if you could, thank you. So the petitioner is seeking to vacate a 12-foot wide alley lying west of DeSoto Boulevard, so that is the, the western boundary of this particular uh, neighborhood, and east of Moss Rose Avenue, which is a paper street that is uh, directly along the Pinellas Trail. The applicant lives at 503 Palm Avenue. They are requesting vacation to construct a swimming pool in the backyard. The vacation will add this portion of property to the tax rolls. And you can see the crosshatch area is the platted and unopened right of way that is uh, subject for the request for vacation. Palm Avenue to the south, and then Ocean View Avenue to the north. And we should, I should note that uh, we asked that the petitioner consider. Uh, petitioning for the vacation of the entire right-of-way. Uh, the basis for that was to not have a remnant piece uh, of vacated right-of-way in the middle of uh, an existing right-of-way. We did notify all of the neighbors, uh, in addition to those that would be 200 feet or within 200 feet of the residents. We notified all residents on uh, Ocean View Avenue as well as on Palm Avenue. And you can see in terms of the infrastructure, there is currently no county infrastructure in the right-of-way. As was mentioned by the clerk, the uh, electric utility Duke Energy has requested the retainage of a utility and drainage easement, which the county would support as well for future needs uh, if they become necessary. Next slide, please. And again, this is a community view you can see by the, uh, the Google Earth view where 503 Palm Avenue is. Again, Moss Rose Avenue would run on the uh, east side of the trail, but again, it's a paper street. The right-of-way currently, as I mentioned, is unopened. It's heavily vegetated. This is looking east from the trail. Uh, you can see that there's a little bit of green space, but then quite a bit of trees that uh, 
are bordering, or I should say are within potentially the right of way and back up to each one of the properties that uh, back up to the right of way currently. This is looking west. You can see the a utility pole. That utility pole just to the left there would indicate where the right of way is roughly. Uh, this is a, a picture of Mr. Scopos's backyard. The, the next couple of pictures are indicative of uh, how the right of way has already been encroached into uh, existing uh, conditions. This is another picture showing uh, some improvements that are in the backyard that Mr. Scopos has that were there as he indicated when he moved in. But again, they are indicative that uh, the right of way has not been maintained. It is unopened uh, at this time. So the county departments were queried have no objections. Uh, Public Works have, and Utilities have requested the retention of the drainage and utility easement over the vacated area for future needs if necessary. And as I mentioned uh, just a few moments ago, the Florida statutes does allow uh, Mr. Scopos to petition for the vacation of the entire right of way, not just the portion behind his home. And again, we did uh, notice all of the adjacent property owners, not only that uh, there was the petition to vacate, but also that uh, by the approval of the vacation, they would have an increase in their property based upon uh, the splitting, if you will, of the right of way and, and each one of those property owners gaining a certain amount of property as a result of that. This is a timeline uh, from when the application started. Of course, we know that we've had a number of deferments related to the COVID-19 situation. Next slide, please. And again, the staff's recommendation is approval of the requested right of way vacation. I'd be happy to entertain any questions you might have. Well, I had a big question until you just said that the, <laughs> all the property owners along that would have a piece of that right away, not just the one person. Correct. So he would not own a little strip of land behind everybody's house? No. Okay. <laughs> that would be very weird. No, um, and again, uh, I will defer, <laughs> to the like. <laughs> I'll defer to the county attorney on this, but uh, it's an operation of law in determining actually the, the split of the, the right of way, but based upon our review of the plat, would appear that it would be a 50-50 split okay. between the property owners that uh, adjoin, or I should say, butt up against the uh, right away at the rear of their properties. Okay, great. <laughs> I just couldn't figure out why you would do that. Never mind. Other it's questions? been a long day already. Sorry. I understand. Um, questions? Yes, Mr. Welch. Thank you, Madam Chair. So you're recommending we maintain a drainage and utility easement and yes, sir. it has been a long day, so maybe I'm just not with it. But on the backyard east and west slides. If... Get them up here, Commissioner. Hold okay. on one sec. Now, this is not Mr. Scopos's backyard. This is just really looking. This is DeSoto Boulevard. That's not the slide. I think he's getting there. Uh, eight, slide eight, I think. That one, yeah, is that it? Right here. Yeah. So how is, does that? that not present the same problem as the last case we just saw if we wanted to use it for drainage or utility so if we wanted to use it for drainage and utility we would have to have clear space for that at this present time we don't need that but the benefit that mr scopos would receive from the vacation of the right of way is there are different setbacks for construction of for instance in this case a pool from an easement he has the ability to build a pool deck, for instance, into the easement to encroach into the easement, not the pool itself, but the deck. So uh, the, the vacation affords him more room in a very small backyard. Having been in the backyard, it is relatively small. So this vacation would give him additional space within the backyard because that uh, six feet of the 12 feet that he would acquire, he would be able to encroach into that with the pool deck. And still leave room for future drainage or utility work if we need it? Yes. Okay. And again, if, if we came along and we needed more of that, we would ask for that back. But that's why the, the pool itself cannot encroach into the easement, only that portion of the deck. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions of staff? Uh, does the applicant want to speak Mr. to this? Um, I just wanted to say that I bought the house two and a half years ago. 
Uh, they did not do a survey when I bought the house, and all my neighbors are in the easement um, all the way up to DeSoto Avenue. So I'm looking at what's in my backyard, and I'm looking at what's in the neighbor's backyard, and I'm like, well, I got plenty of room to build a small pool. So I go to the surveyor and I, I give him the drawing for the pool and he gives it back to me and there's a line going through the middle of the pond. And I said, mm -hmm. well, what's that? He said, that's your property line. <laughs> um, so that kind of started this. I had no idea. I mean, I built pools for a living. I own my own company. Um, I would like to have a swimming pool if we could find a way to fit it in there. That's all. Did anybody have any questions on you know the existing stuff? I will say it's there. There's a smoker, there's a pond, a fire pit. Um, all that stuff was built from the guy that built the house in 2004. It took me a lot to figure out who built it and how it got there, but none of that stuff was permitted either. Um, so that kind of opened up a big can of worms. So I'm just trying to put in a small pool and be done. Okay. Anything else? Do you have any questions for Mr. Scopus? No, I don't think so. Um, okay. Uh, we have another card from Colette Silliberti. Um, I bought my house in 2012, and that easement was there as a drainage easement. And I know over several years, the houses like at 510, I live at 507 Palm, the houses on the other side of the block, you had the same drainage easement going behind those houses. And like three or four years ago, several of them when the county came in there, they realized people were encroaching like on our side and some of the houses got flooded. So I am opposing this because I do not want to experience what the houses across the street from us have over the years with flooding. So I'm opposed to letting anyone build anything in that area. I think it should stay in its natural state. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Comments from the commission? Just a question following up on the last comment. Yeah. So have we looked at um, any drainage impacts? Again, based upon the review of the area, and it's difficult to really get a good uh, understanding of it based upon the pictures you saw from the east and west end. If you look at an aerial of the neighborhood, it's very heavily tree, but from what we could see being allowed into Mr. Scopos's backyard, that right away is already very encumbered. I think the neighbors have, for whatever reason, uh, they've put fences into the right of way. So I don't believe that there is a whole lot of active drainage that is occurring there. Uh, I'm not aware that there is a drainage issue in that area, but if we determine that there was a need for drainage, that's the reason for retaining the easement that we would be able to have some kind of either active or passive drainage in that area. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. That was going to be my comment as well. I think that's, I think that's spot on. And so I would recommend approval. Second. Okay. Okay. We have a motion from Commissioner Eggers, second from Commissioner Welch. If there's no further comments, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I got you this time. Uh, motion carries unanimously. Okay. Item uh, 37. So item number 37 is a quasi-judicial hearing. Um, so this is a quasi-judicial petition to vacate submitted by Lazarus Pascalitis, Eugenia Pascalitis, and Socorratus Pascalitis for a portion of a 10-foot drainage and or utility easement lying in lots 36 and 37, Baywood Village. Um, since this is a quasi-judicial hearing, all members of the public wishing to speak who are appearing either in person or appearing through the Zoom, whether it's um, on the Zoom video or uh, through the phone line, must be sworn in. Um, so for those of you who are wishing to speak, whether you are attending in person or virtually, if able, please raise your right hand. And then do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth signified by saying, I do? The public hearing was properly advertised. An affidavit of publication has been received for filing. Letters of no objection have been received from the appropriate parties, and all inter interested parties have been notified as to the date of the public hearing. We have not received any correspondence on this item. The matter is properly before the board to be heard. 
Uh, yes, Commissioner Eggers. In the uh, background information, it says that uh, there was um, no objections received from Duke Energy, Frontier, Pinellas County Utilities, TECO, uh, People's Gas and Wild. Bright House requested that the applicant be aware that, that if the possibility of relocation occurs, the relocation will be at the expense of the petitioner. I'm assuming the petitioner knows that. Yes, Commissioner, that is correct. The uh, petitioner actually has to receive those letters of no objection, and that's been a recent position change on the on behalf of Bright House to add that language. But they're aware of it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Does anybody feel a need for move presentation? Yeah, move approval. <laughs> okay. Commissioner Eggers. Second from Commissioner Welch. Do we have any uh, public comment? At this time, if there are any members Senator of the public Hansen. who wish to comment on this agenda item, please hit star nine on the telephone or uh, raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam Chair, there's no one online that wishes to speak on this item. Okay, there's no further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Madam Chair. Yes. Just if we could get a just a 10 second explanation from the county attorney why the previous two were legislative and this one is quasi judicial yeah. when no, they're both good. they yes. were all petitions to vacate that would be i think great for our viewing audience and for us <laughs> what the basic difference is is in the uh first two that you saw that were legislative hearings and and i think you'll be seeing in another one coming up under 38 that's a vacation of right of way and under 37, which you just attended to, that is vacation of a drainage or utility easement. So it's just a different interest in land that you are essentially releasing if you vacate it. Different, two different statutory schemes in the Florida statute supply. Okay then. All right, item 38. So item number 38 is a legislative petition to vacate. It's submitted by Pinellas County for a portion of 118th Avenue North right of way lying east of Starkey Road and west of the Seaboard Coastline Railroad. The public hearing was properly advertised and the affidavit of publication has been received for filing. Letters of no objection have been received from the appropriate parties with the exception of Duke Energy, which is seeking an easement. All interested parties have been notified as to the date of the public hearing and no correspondence has been received. The matter is properly before the board to be heard. Okay, do we have questions? No questions. Do we have any public comment? At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to comment on this agenda item, please hit star nine on the telephone or raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam Chair, there is no one that wishes to be heard on this item. Okay, we'll entertain a motion then. Move approval, Madam Chair. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Long, second from Commissioner Eggers. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Item 39. Item number 39 is a proposed ordinance amending section 2-142 of the Pinellas County Code related to the risk finance ordinance. Pu the public hearing was properly advertised. The affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received and the matter is properly before the board to be heard. Go ahead. And I will address this one for you tonight. Um, this is a proposed modification, uh, again, as the clerk said, to your risk finance ordinance. Um, what this would do is modify the delegation that you all have currently provided to uh, certain staff members to basically settle claims that come through your risk management department. We're talking about liability cases. Uh, you all know that you see a number of cases, particularly under my agenda, for new lawsuits that have been filed, things like trip and falls on sidewalks, automobile accidents, and suits of that nature. Uh, currently, uh, there are different levels of delegation to various members of your staff, the highest one being that upon the concurrence of the county administrator and the county attorney, those claims can be settled in any amount up to $50,000. So that's either accepting a settlement in that amount or rejecting a settlement in that amount. Uh, we routinely, once cases are in litigation, get proposals for settlement from the plaintiffs. What this ordinance is intended to do is to allow your staff to act uh, more swiftly in responding to 
uh, proposals for settlement that we would recommend be rejected. Uh, so this would be increasing the authority of the county administrator and county attorney acting in concert to reject only those claims between 50,000 and 200,000. And the reason why we selected 200,000 as the limit is because that is the sovereign immunity limit under the sovereign immunity caps. Those caps, as you know, are 200 uh, per person, 300 per occurrence. We were comfortable going to 200 to ask you all for that delegation. Uh, it is very common that we see proposals for settlement filed very early in litigation for the max for $200,000 at a point in time that as, as staff, we just don't have enough information uh, to really recommend that we would approve it. But we do need to take action to reject it when those things are filed in the course of litigation. Um, so that's why we're bringing this forward. Again, this would only increase the authority between $50,000 and $200,000 to reject settlements. Anything where, we, where the county would be paying out uh, funds, $50,000, those will still be coming to you for. Of course. So are you saying that if it's over $50,000, you're going to bring it to us? If, if the proposal was to accept a proposal for settlement in excess of $50,000, so in other words, the county would be paying out, um, funds in excess of 50 that would still come to the Board of County Commissioners for approval. Um, and one thing I would note, um, there's really no risk in us rejecting proposals for settlement up to $200,000. Uh, and as, a, as I have said to, to many of you all on occasion, just because we reject a proposal early in litigation doesn't mean that we can't still get to a point where the case would be settled. Uh, but we would never bring a recommendation forward to the board to uh, settle something and pay funds out until we had uh, full details on injuries and, and uh, treatment, et cetera. So let's say there was an offer for 150,000. Would that come before us or would that be something you would be making a decision on to reject? If staff felt that it should be rejected, it would be done so at the staff level, so long as the county administrator and county attorney were in concurrence. So then would we know about it though? How Not until the conclusion of litigation. About it if they wanted to settle at 150 right. or anything over 50. Because do keep in mind when, when if for instance, earlier in the agenda, I had a recommendation on um, active litigation where we didn't talk about the details here. Um, I spoke with each of you individually about what our recommendation was in that case, and I'm not going to tell you what that recommendation is because those things are exempt from public records until the conclusion of litigation. So, no, you would not find out what happened on a case unless and until it's settled. But again, there's no risk in us rejecting things up to $200,000. It doesn't mean the case ends. It just means that we continue going on collecting evidence to support any kind of a recommendation that we would bring forward to you all to accept a proposal for settlement. OK. OK, we have a motion from Commissioner Welch, second from Commissioner Peters. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Item 40. Oh, heavens. So, item number 40 is a proposed ordinance amending the Pinellas County Code by revising Article 4, County Sewer System. The public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received and the matter is properly before the board to be heard. Go ahead. Hillary Weber is here. She is the Assistant Director of Utilities. Um, the, the bullets kind of highlight the items. We can certainly have for a staff report if that's your desire. Do we want a staff report? Yes, Mr. Justice. Thank you, Madam Chair. I mean, I read it and I know what it does, but I don't know what, I don't know what it does. So just <laughs> if we, as far as like what it does on a day to day, what does that really mean, the impact? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm interested in hearing that. Good evening, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Hillary Weber, Assistant Utilities Director. 
Uh, so the sewer use ordinance changes include three items. First, the dental amalgam prohibitive discharge. Second is the pharmaceutical waste prohibitive discharge. And the third piece is industrial pretreatment non-discharge permits. Um, so the first piece for the dental amalgam rule, this is a federal prohibitive discharge requirement through the EPA. This will affect new and current dental facilities and will require compliance using an amalgam separator equipment, which is a, um, amalgam is a composite from fillings from your teeth um, composed of mercury and other metals. So many current dental facilities already have this equipment. All facilities will need to send in a one-time compliance report form verifying that they have the required equipment in use. Uh, so current dental facilities have until October 12th to submit this form. Uh, new facilities have 90 days from the start of discharge into the collection system to submit this form. The second piece is regarding pharmaceutical waste disposals at any medical facilities, including hospitals, vet clinics, and pharmacies. This is also a federal rule requirement through EPA's Code of Federal Regulations and prohibits all pharmaceuticals from being disposed of down the drain and into our sewer collection system. This is meant to stop pharmaceuticals from entering our sewer collection system. And finally, the third piece pertains to the industrial pretreatment permit name change. Permits will be renamed from industrial wastewater discharge permit to industrial wastewater permit. So currently, all industrial user permits, despite whether or not the industry's discharge, are classified as discharge permits. However, type three permit holders have the ability to discharge into our sewer collection system but may not be discharging. So the new ordinance language now designates all permits to be classified as industrial wastewater permits. Uh, I'll also note that annual inspections will still be required for all permit holders, including the non-dischargers, to ensure no discharge is occurring. And with that, I'll answer any questions. All right. I but what, what about the discharging? <laughs> <laughs> So Sorry. we're trying to stop that. <laughs> yeah. I would have thought that was already in the law, but hey. So. Well, it is in the federal law. Well, right. Uh, yes, ma'am. So my question is, what is the methodology for notifying our hospitals, our dentists, our, the, the folks that pick up the grease? How are we notifying them that this is going into place and that these changes are being made? Um, that I'm, I'm not familiar with how we're with, I don't have the information for that right now, but I could call up our subject matter expert or water quality manager, Matt Wadowick. Well, I think that's really an important component that we're making these changes that affects a lot of our facilities in this county. Now, I will point out for the dental amalgam rule, we have started sending out letters to all current dental facilities, approximately 140 facilities. We started sending these letters back in May of 2018. Um, many of them have already have installed the equipment. Um, so that piece mainly affects new dental facilities that are being um, constructed. But how, how about our hospitals and providers and clinics and stuff like that? The hospitals and uh, clinics, I'm sorry, the hospitals and clinics already currently are doing these practices. This rule actually just codifies it through EPA and then puts it in our ordinance as law. Um, they, they're already mandated through EPA and DEP to actually have paperwork for any kind of proper disposal of any pharmaceutical. And those companies that pick up the grease, how about them? Um, are you talking grease haulers? That's a separate issue from this ordinance, but grease haulers we, we do um, have under our ordinance, but this is separate from that. Um, so I'd also like to note that these are not new requirements. This is codifying um, and allowing the utility, the authority through the code and through the ordinance. This is not no new requirements. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Eggers, second from Commissioner Peters. Do we have any public comment? At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to comment on agenda item 40, uh, please raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting or hit star nine on the telephone. And Madam Chair, it does appear we have one person that wishes to speak on this item. Uh, I have a first name, Chris. So Chris, if you'll go ahead and unmute yourself, give us your first last name, spelling, address, and you'll have three minutes to address the board. Chris, can you hear me? Chris, it looks like you're unmuted, but I can't hear anything coming through. Let me check the audio here. Oh. Chris, one more time. Okay. Oh, is that you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, we can hear you. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead sir. I can't see. Uh, um, that discussion reminded me of a time several years ago. I was uh, trying to get rid of some old prescriptions, and I took them to a Walgreens store, and they would not accept them. And my concern is, what the heck are you supposed to do with them? Because I understand the problem of, of getting into the waste stream or into the you know, into the sewage by when I'm throwing them away, and they wouldn't they wouldn't take them. That's a great That's, question. <laughs> what are you supposed to do with it? Yeah. Do we have an answer for that? Yeah. Um, so some, some of the options includes our solids waste facility may be able to receive some phar pharmaceuticals depending on the drug classification, uh, but no hazardous waste such as chemotherapy drugs. Uh, currently, facilities manage disposals themselves, um, and they're there's nothing official in our ordinance that prohibits pharmaceuticals from going down the drain. Uh, they can also uh, hire or outsource a third party for hazardous uh, pharmaceuticals disposal. Go ahead, Jill. Okay. Yep. Good evening, Jill Silverboard, Deputy County Administrator. We actually have um, instructions on the mypanelis.com, so you can go to our web, uh, website. And there are some alternative instructions there, solid waste. Uh, and the county also participate in drop-off. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you can drop off prescriptions so that they can be disposed of for persons, individuals, that sort of thing, um, frequently throughout uh, any given year. So there's a number of different options for that. And we actually have some instructional materials that utilities does um, as alternatives to putting things down the drain. So uh, we've got we've got some good instructions, and if we can, we'll get the gentleman's contact information, we'll make sure he has it. Okay, great. Commissioner Welch? I had that same issue. Um, the old St. Pete Police used to have Station it, yeah. used to take them. I'm I don't sure know if they're doing the do, new yeah. one. But also CVS uh, has a little oh. container that allows you to come and drop your unused prescriptions in there. And Chris, just for the record, can we get your first last name uh, and address just so we have it for the board board record? Yes, sir. Uh, Chris Clement, um, 612 Orange Street, Palm um, Harbor, Florida, 34683. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, yes. Just a quick, this is for, the, and this permitting is for non-domestic, right? This is for requirements right. for non-domestic users. That's what we're doing. That's what we're tapping. Non -dis Non-discharge, yes. Right. Okay. Okay. We have Thank a mo motion. Commissioner Eggers, second from Commissioner Peters. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven zero. <laughs> Item 41. So item number 41 is a proposed ordinance, proposed ordinances adopting the t downtown Palm Harbor master plan, amending the comprehensive plan and amending the future land use categories and rules. The public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. A uh, one email in support of the proposed ordinances have, have been received. And the matter is properly before the board to be heard. Thank you. Um, somebody want to do a 
brief presentation? Um, yes, commissioners. Uh, actually, uh, Evan's coming up, but Scott was actually going to provide the presentation tonight, um, but he got it called away on an emergency. Um, mm. And so this will be coming back to you. So we thought we could defer the presentation and Evan could provide um, any, or answer any questions you have regarding the process. I do have one card on this issue. But... Okay. Um, Go ahead. Go ahead. Lisa's just going to answer questions. If we don't have any, I guess we don't have any okay. for right now. For this? No. Well, this, this, gonna... this particular uh, uh, action would be transmitting these two ordinances to the DEO. Oh. So they'll be coming back to us, and then we'll have to go through our adoption process. So this is just giving us permission to go ahead and send it to Tallahassee. Okay. That? Okay, but I do have a card. Um, David Ballard Geddes. No? Yeah, of course. Good evening <laughs> uh, again, David Ballard Geddes Jr. I live on Georgia Avenue in Palm Harbor. Um, based on, on this letter that I, I had received in the mail the other day, um, it it's, has a, a, a map depicting what appears to be two different phases of this uh, proposed uh, development. Um, and it says the, the, the purpose of this hearing will be to consider an ordinance de adopting the downtown Palm Harbor master plan and an associated ordinance amending future land use map expanding current activity as identified in the master plan. Um, and it further cites uh, code development um, and form-based code um, stating um, in the uh, agenda item here, expanding activity center to include areas transitioning from the downtown core into established residential areas, uh, expanding mixed-use uh, corridors, which includes my home. Um, and I, I feel as though there's a lot of unclarity um, in the multitude of ordinances here. Um, and in, uh, it seems this multi-phased project um, is, and the expansion of this project, um, the various uh, ordinances and means to an end and end to a means as far as um, projected development, as far as code base is concerned, um, how this affects my property um, or any um, allowances or adverse variances that could affect um, my property and importantly so how would the funding of this um, development uh, affect um, me um, and potentially the the equity in my home um, would be my my question um, regarding this future um, form-based code development Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think it would be good if maybe somebody uh, got with Mr. Geddes and explained. Evan can certainly do that. Okay. I mean, maybe not right now, but at some point. So he, because that's a that's a big answer. <laughs> well, and you you don't have form based code before you. Okay. All right. He the master plan that sets the stage for potentially doing a form based code. The code itself will actually be the implementing, uh, it'll be the implementing uh, regulation to put uh, any new zoning, whatever, that's basically how we're gonna implement the master plan, would be through the code itself. So that'll be coming at a future date. Okay, and we'll do a full presentation at that point oh, yeah. about what it yes, all means. Okay. Tonight? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. If we, what we'd ask for is that we can, we can adopt this, which gives us the authority to transmit it to the state. Um, that will then come back, and we will then bring it forward for your approval. We'll have a full presentation at that time. And, and again, remember, the other components, like form-based code, is actually scheduled for the August 11th meeting. Oh, okay. David, right. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, right. a great, good idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the August 11th meeting would be important, too. Okay. Chair. Okay. Okay. Did we already have a motion? Okay. We already had a motion from Commissioner Long, second from okay. Commissioner Peters. 
Um, do we have anybody on? If, if there are any other members of the public that are online that wish to comment on agenda item 41, uh, please hit star nine on the telephone or raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam Chair, there's no one else that wishes to speak. Okay. So we have a motion from Commissioner Long, second from Commissioner Peters. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 42. So item number 42 is a proposed resolution approving a substantial amendment to the fiscal year 2019-2020 annual action plan for the purposes of for the purpose of receiving community developed block grant and emergency solutions grant coronavirus response funds. The public hearing was properly advertised. The affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received and the matter is properly before the board to be heard. <laughs> this should be an easy one. Accepting money. <laughs> yep. I know. Bruce is here if you want a staff report. Move approval. <laughs> Second with a real quick question. Yes, yes, sir. So the next round of care is the phase two. What are we looking at in terms of timing of finalizing that and mm. getting that out? Okay, so on, on CARES 2, they're, come on up, Jill, go ahead. You look like you wanted to say something. So, so CARES 2 on, so on the individual side and on the, uh, yeah. that's continuing. So we're, we're actively working on that. However, on the business side, right. they've got the letter of interest out. They're receiving those back. They should have that up early August. Early August, okay. But these are entirely different funds. This is. This is separate funds. This right. is not incorporated within the current money. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Madam, Madam Chair, we have Commissioner Steele also that has a comment. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I just have a question. Um, I looked through the report. So um, who will we be funding them? When will we be funding them? And how will they come back to us with the plan as to how the money is going to be distributed? Thanks, Bruce. Good evening, Bruce Bussey, Community Development Manager. Um, this is actually the second amendment that you've seen. Back in May, we brought the first amendment to you. At that time, we'd received an allocation of CDBG dollars and what I, we would call emergency solution grants round one. Upon your approval, we moved forward with an application process. We received a total of um, 46, 44 applications wow. of which we've been able to recommend 22 for funding. Those are now, um, at that time, the board delegated approval authority to the chairman or the county administrator. And so all of those are under the $250,000 threshold. So we're moving forward with those 22 projects. We're funding a number of nonprofit agencies that are providing food in neighborhoods. We're providing um, assistance to quite a few agencies that are providing summer programs for children, um, some medical care. And then with the ESG funds, we're providing dollars to assist um, with street outreach programs as well as operations at homeless facilities. So that basically has allocated the CB, the COVID funds for ESG and the majority of the CDBG block grant. This amendment um, is required because after that point, we've got notice from HUD that we're receiving almost $4 million more of emergency solution grants funding. We would anticipate upon your approval and HUD's approval of having another round of applications specific for the emergency solutions funding. So, Bruce, is there a, um, a list somewhere of specific amounts to specific agencies? <laughs> it's a lot of pages, but... Yeah, we can provide you that list. Oh, okay. um, we just finalized that in the last couple of weeks, so it wasn't okay. included in, in this item. Okay. All right, thanks. I think that's what she was asking for. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, we have a motion from Commissioner Peters, second from Commissioner Welch. All in favor say aye. Oh, sorry. Do we have anybody on the line? Sorry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, if there is anybody on the line that wishes to comment on agenda item 42, please raise your hand virtually or hit star nine on the telephone. And Madam Chair, you're in the clear. I think we don't have any public <laughs> comment on this item. All righty then. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Item 43. So item number 43 is a proposed resolution approving the fiscal year 2020-2024 five-year consolidated plan, including the fiscal year 2020-2021 annual action plan, 
and authorizing actions related to the Community Development Block Grant, Home Investment Partnerships, and Emergency Solutions Grant programs. The public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received and the matter is properly before the board to be heard. All right, do we have any questions? Motions? Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Welch, second from Commissioner Long. Do we have anybody on the line? At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to comment on agenda item 43, please hit star nine on the telephone or raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam Chair, there's no one that wishes to be heard on this item. Okay, that being the case, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> That was an I, okay. Um, <laughs> item 44, last but not least. So item number 44 is a proposed resolution approving the City of Largo's 15-year review of the West Bay Drive Community Redevelopment Trust Fund and directing the City of Largo to amend the West Bay Drive Community Redevelopment Area Plan. The public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence from the public has been received, but I will note that the clerk did receive one comment from a staff person writing on behalf of the city of Largo who indicated that um, staff would be available during virtual comments um, should there be questions. All right. And the matter is properly before the board to be heard. Okay, do we have any questions? Did just, the, it just, I was looking at the, um, the staff report and looking at the the part about uh, we're going to continue the tax increment financing at 95%, but that the county's TIF contribution is higher than the city's, right? No. We would actually, the resolution would keep us from paying more into the trust fund than the city moving forward. It, it is higher, so we're it, it, it has been higher in the past. It is not currently higher. Okay, but just to... But so moving forward, we won't allow that to happen again. Okay. Does that change the, does that, it doesn't change the TIF at all. It just makes sure that we don't go higher. Than it only changes it if for some reason, maybe a millage change or something like that, where the calculation comes out where we would be contributing more. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. We establish that for every CRA going forward or is it case by case? So we, um, in March, when we presented the interim recommendations uh, for a CRA policy update, um, we went ahead and made the decision that any, uh, any case moving forward, we would apply the same standard to it. Um, but we are in the process of fully updating. We brought a consultant on board, as we told you in March, and we, sh we are expecting in the next few months to come back to you with our recommendations related to the overall policy as well. Okay, I was <laughs> trying to understand if we actually have that in a policy somewhere or are we just saying we're going to do that moving forward? Right. So the only policy we have that is when we worked with you in March in the presentation and, and worked as made an interim recommendation for that. But it is not in a formal policy. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just this past March, it seems like so long ago. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I agree. Wow. Pre-COVID. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Do we have anybody on the line? Brian? Thank you, Madam Chair. At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to comment on this resolution, item number 44, please raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting or hit star nine on the telephone. And Madam Chair, there is no one that wishes to be heard on this item. Okay, great, then I'll entertain a motion. Thought we already did that. I don't we, think we did. Did we? Move, no. a, move no. approval. It's so hard to keep track, I know. <laughs> All right, we have a motion from Commissioner Welch, second from Commissioner Peters. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, and we are adjourned. <laughs> well done, Madam Chair. <laughs>